Section 5.3 Determining the Inverse Using Composition of Functions In this section we're going to talk about the special property that inverses have regarding composition of functions. We'll show how we can use that property to verify inverse functions. We'll get a little bit more practice determining inverse functions and then verifying that they are inverses and we'll see an application. So first let's talk about that important property of inverse functions. Uh, let's consider the functions f of x uh, is 2x minus 4 and g of x is 1 half x plus 2. Alright so now using the ideas we figured out uh, we talked about in the previous section let's evaluate f composed g of 5. Well that would be f of g of 5. Now g of 5 would be half of 5 plus 2. Half of 5 half of 5 plus 2. So let's see half of 5 that's 5 halves 5 halves plus 2. 5 halves plus 2 is 4 halves and so that would be 9 halves. So then this becomes f of 9 halves. Now f of 9 halves is 2 times 9 halves minus 4 which is 9 minus 4 which is 5. So f composed g of 5 is 5. All right. What about g compose f of 2? g compose f of 2, that would be g of f of 2, which would be g of 2 times 2 minus 4. So that would be g of, now let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, and that's g of 0. Now g of 0 is half of 0 plus 2, and half of 0 plus 2 is 2. So g compose f of 2 is 2. So look at that. For these functions I, I have this composition in either direction and I input a number and at the end I got back that same number. Now what if we instead of substituting a specific number we said well what if we looked at all numbers x and we wanted f compose g of x. All right, so let's figure out what's f composed g of x. Well, that would be f of g of x, which would be, now f of x is 2x minus 4, so 2 times g of x minus 4. Distributive property. 2 times 1 half x is x, 2 times 2 is 4, and we still have the minus 4 and x plus 4 minus 4 is x. So f compose g of x is x. Now what does this say? Whenever I substitute x into this composition I get back that same x. Now this only happens sometimes. I can't just pick two functions at random and see if this will happen. It only happens in a special case. Two functions, f and g, are inverses of each other if and only if f composed g of x is x for all x in the domain of g and g composed f of x is x for all x in the domain of f. And remember that the domain of f is equivalent to the range of g and vice versa. So inverse functions have this property that their compositions in a sense undo each other and whatever we input into the composition we get back out after the composition. Show that f of x is 3x plus 9 and g of x is 1 3rd x minus 3 are inverses of each other. 
All right, so first we might want to mention the domains of these functions. So notice that the domain is negative infinity to infinity and is the range. So actually the domain and range of both of these functions is uh, negative infinity to infinity. They are linear functions. I should say they are non-horizontal linear functions. All right, so how do we show that they're inverses of each other? We evaluate f compose g of x, and we evaluate g compose f of x. And we better get that they are both equal to x. So let me erase this. We'll, come, we'll do that later. Okay, so first, f compose g of x. All right, so g of x is 1 third x minus 3, and f of x is 3x plus 9. So I'd have 3 times g, the g of x. All right, so maybe it, it helps to remember the, all, the other notation, which is f of g of x. And so that is 3 times something plus 9. Now, in this case, the something is 1 third x minus 3. Distributive property. 3 times 1 third x is x. 3 times negative 3 is minus 9. Plus 9 is x. f composed g of x is x. All right, so let's remember that. Now let's evaluate g compose f of x g compose f of x would be g of f of x, which would be one-third of something minus 3. And in this case, the something is 3x plus 9. Applying the distributive property, one-third of 3x is x, one-third of 9 is 3, and then minus 3, and we do get x. So we find that f compose g of x is x, and g compose f of x is x. So therefore, f and g are inverses. Our f of x equals 1 over x plus 14, and g of x equals x plus 14 inverses of each other. We'll explain. Well, let's check. What's f compose g of x? f compose g of x, that's f of g of x. And so that's 1 over some quantity plus 14. And in this case, the quantity is x plus 14. Simplifying gives me 1 over x plus 28, which is not equal to x. Right? It is not x. So since f compose g of x is not equal to x for all x in the domain of g, then f and g are not inverses. State the domain and range. Oh, we, given the function f of x is the square root of 2x plus 1, state the domain and range of f. All right, so this is a square root function. We've talked about how to find the domain of this function. Let's see, so we would need the 2x plus 1 to be greater than or equal to 0. All right, solving for x, we would find that x is greater than or equal to negative 1 half. Since it's a, a fairly simple square root function, if we just sort of think about it now, the graph, if here's negative 1 half, the graph would do something like this. And so then the range is uh, uh, greater than or equal to 0. All right, so the domain negative one half, uh, bracket negative one half, comma zero, 
comma infinity, excuse me, and the range would be bracket zero comma infinity. Determine f inverse of x and state its domain and range. All right, so we talked about how to do that in a previous section. We would say y equals the square root of 2x minus 1, I'm sorry, 2x plus 1. Invert the variables. x equals the square root of 2y plus 1, and now solve for y. I'll square both sides. x squared is 2y plus 1. I'll subtract 1. x squared minus 1 is 2y, and I'll divide by 2. y is equal to x squared minus 1 over 2. So then the inverse function is x squared minus, so f inverse of x would be x squared minus 1 over 2. Now what about the domain and range of the inverse? Remember that between a function and its inverse, the domain and range switch places, basically. So the domain of the inverse function is 0 to infinity, and the range is negative 1 half to infinity. So let's verify that they are inverses of each other. All right, so let's compose f with f inverse of x. f composed with f inverse would be f of f inverse of x, which would be the square root of 2 times something plus 1. Now the something in this case is x squared minus 1 over 2. Now we need our x values since our input was the f inverse function we're considering only the x values that are greater than or equal to 0 because the domain of this function was 0 to infinity. All right, the domain of this function was 0 to infinity. All right, so that would give me then the square root of 2 times x squared minus 1 over 2, that would be an x squared minus 1 plus 1, and so then that would be the square root of x squared, and the square root of x squared is equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0. So that checks out. All right, what about f inverse of f of x? All right, so f inverse of f of x would be, f inverse is something squared minus 1 over 2. And the something, in this case, is the square root of 2x plus 1. And we need this to be true from negative 1 half to infinity. All right, so square root of something squared, that would give me then 2x plus 1 minus 1 over 2, and that would be 2x over 2, which is x. And that'll be valid. We don't have to worry as much about that one as in the previous. Since f Compose f inverse of x is x, and f inverse compose f of x is x, then they are inverses. Of each other. In a hot air balloon race, the height of Team Grand National's balloon at t, min t minutes is given by h of t is 30 plus 50t. All right, so let's find h inverse of t. All right, so then I'll let um, y equal 30 plus 50t. 
So then t is 30 plus 50y. All right, I've inverted the variables. So then t minus 30 is 50y. And t minus 30 over 50 is equal to y. So then h inverse of t is t minus 30 divided by 50. All right, so there's the inverse function. Let's find and interpret h inverse of 355. H inverse of 355 would be 355 minus 30 over 50. And so that would be 325 over 50, which is 6.5. All right. so. This, remember, our original function gives the height after t minutes. So then the inverse function inverts those. So I can say when the balloon, uh, I can say the balloon's height is 355, um, we didn't give us uh, any units, let's go with feet, let's just say feet, I know. feet, after 6.5 minutes. Verify that h and h inverse are inverses of each other. All right, so let's evaluate h, compose h inverse of t. So that would be h of h inverse. The h function is 30 plus 50 times something. And this something in this case is t minus 30 over 50. So that would then be 30 plus 50 times some quantity over 50 is just the quantity. And so 30 plus t minus 30 is t, so that checks out. Let's find h inverse of h of t. And so that would be some quantity minus 30 over 50, and the quantity is h of t, which is 30 plus 50t. Now 30 plus 50t subtract 30 is 50t divided by 50 is t. So that checks out as well and they are inverses of each other. Alright, that concludes the presentation for this section.